morning. It's Saturday the 12th of October 2013. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. My name's Chris Ritt. Oh, I've just realised we haven't signed into Skype yet, have we? I do apologise. One second. Let's sign into Skype, otherwise you won't be able to join in, just in case, in case there's any, you know, you know, slight chance that someone may actually want to ring in today. We didn't have any phone calls last week. Where is everyone? I do hope people are not passing away while I'm doing my programme. Please. There's already been a minor disaster this morning in the Reardon household. As I rush about my day's activities, I usually get up on a Saturday now about... Ooh, there we are, Skype's up and running now. Usually get up on a Saturday... Ooh, about... Um, am I loud enough? Can you hear me all right? I usually get up on a Saturday around about 10 o'clock. I go downstairs and have breakfast. And today, uh, my dinner is already in the oven. Oh, yes. Yes, we've got one of those baked potatoes with um, uh, sort of uh, a little little pot of vegetables that are bubbling away downstairs in olive oil, tomatoes, mushrooms, onions. What's the other thing? Oh, I, I might have put too much garlic on. <laughs> Don't come near me later on today. <sighs> oh, <laughs> oh, please. Mind you, it's, it's better than having people with bad breath come up to you, isn't it? Which I often get. <laughs> while I'm doing a karaoke or DJ night. Yes, people come up and ask for requests. And sometimes, not always, sometimes they've got bad... I, I ought to take a picture and name and shame them on the show, shouldn't I, really? Don't you think? Now, a little announcement. Um, for those of you that download the video via iTunes, that little, um, what, do you, what do you call it, that little service, I'm afraid, is going to stop. Okay. As of now, actually. All right. Uh, the reason being, the people that hosted the video side of things, Blip TV, um, have changed basically what they do. OK, it was relatively cheap. I mean, all these things cost, you know, it was relatively cheap to do it. And that service is now stopping for me. Um, and I've looked around at other ways to do this. And it's because of the length of the show and the file size... OK, once it's uh, kind of gone out there, um, it's a little bit impossible to do that. All right. So I'm afraid uh, the the whole iTunes video subscription thing will stop. Now, you can, of course, still continue watching the show uh, via YouTube, either live, as some of you are now. I know there's a few people watching live this morning. How do you know if it's live? Well, have a look at your clock. If it's just coming up to four minutes past twelve. On Saturday, the 12th of October, 2013, and you're watching or listening to us, you are with us live. If it's any other time, that's UK time, of course, British summer time. Uh, if it's any other time, then you are watching a recording. All right. If you're watching a recording, you can still join in by email. The email address, if you want to uh, answer any of a uh, little bits of chat, of topics, of conversation, or you want to say anything at all, then the email address is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk now if you're with us live you can join in by skype or by telephone all right those of you watching via the youtube live thing can see uh, in the top left hand corner we've got the the skype username and the um uh, london phone number it's a local london number it's not a premium rate call okay it's an 020 london number uh, and that is the Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, all right? Skype username, Chris Reardon. Or there's a phone number, 020-8133-6358. Use either of those methods if you was with us live on this uh, Saturday afternoon, OK? 020-8133-6358. Anyway, back to the iTunes thing. So you can still subscribe... To the audio only, the sort of kind of radio version of this show, no problem at all. That carries on. You can subscribe via iTunes. So if you hit subscribe, which is completely free of charge, you get the show each and every Saturday, early Saturday afternoon. As soon as we finish it, it's usually up there within 15 minutes. The audio only version. You can subscribe to that on iTunes. Just open your iTunes, go to the podcast uh, shop section. Type in United Kingdom Talk and you'll find the audio only version up there. OK, the video version, I'm afraid, is to stop going out on iTunes, but you can still watch it uh, via YouTube or Daily Motion, One of those two. 
uh, to find out where that is or the latest show is always up on United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk all right united kingdom talk dot co dot uk or you can subscribe via U- via youtube my youtube username is chris reardon uk all right chris reardon uk that's my youtube username subscribe there and then you get a little email i think every time um is that noise i thought i could hear noise downstairs you never know if ronnie's walking in my best mate He's always got a set of keys and he just walks in. Walks in unannounced. I mean, anything could be happening here. You know, here we are trying to have our little private conversation. And anyone, anyone could walk in. Anyone could walk in. I always double lock all the doors in case, you know, while the show is in progress, we, are ta- we, are ha- we have a siege. You know, and extremists from some faction or other suddenly rush in, rush into the studio and hold me hostage in front of my millions of viewers and listeners and demand money from various governments who then turn around to say, we're not negotiating with you. And then I could, live on this programme, have something terrible happen to me. No one cares. I mean, no doubt the figures would go through the roof, wouldn't they? You're now, I know, aren't you awful? You're now actually hoping that's going to happen, aren't you? I know you are. All the, don't worry, all the doors are double locked. Katie the cat is standing guard outside this studio now. Don't worry too much. I know you are worrying. No one cares. No one cares. Anyway, so back to my minor disaster this morning. So I've gone downstairs, put the dinner on. And I walked past the washing machine and the little lights were... I thought, oh, no. And, of course, I did washing yesterday afternoon. And I realised I haven't hung it up. Oh, no, I don't use the tumble dryer. Oh, no. I have got a tumble dryer. Yes, don't use it ever. Never, ever. I might as well give it away. I, did, I actually did try and give it away last year. But people, were, people muck you about. Do you know what I mean? When you're giving something away free of charge, you'd think they'd bite your hand off, don't you? But, oh, no, oh, no, no, I'll have to arrange someone to get it. Or, uh, oh, can, do you want to come around um, sort of Saturday morning? Oh, it's not really convenient. You know, we usually do shopping on a Saturday. Can I come Monday night or something like that? Well, honestly, aren't people dreadful? You know, you're trying to give something away. Like, oh, I'll have that. Please don't let anyone else have it. And then, oh, it's not convenient for them to come round and collect it. Well, I shan't bother anymore. Excuse me. The bat phone is ringing. Good morning. Chris Reardon, international celebrity, award-winning DJ, landlord, global broadcast. Of course I'm doing my show. Can you tell? How? How? Bubbly and jovial. I'm always like this. I'm not the one who walks around miserable all the time. I'm just about to tell your Waitrose story on this show as well, dear. Do join in. Thank you. Hello. We'll switch your iPad on and you can watch. Well, you can later, yes. Not not quite yet. I'll invite you. Yeah, if you have me playing along in the background somewhere, and then I'll invite you to call in when we get to that bit. You know, because we're not at that bit yet. There's so much to talk to you about. So much. Have you got any dis- dis- Have you got any private conversations for me later? Oh, I get so excited, dear. Okay, then. Are you available later? I could pop over later if you wanted me to. Oh, that's early. It's going back to two. Back to bed at two. Eh? Um. Don't know. Don't know. Okay, lovey. Thank you for your inquiry. Now, put me on in the background, and if you feel necessary, ring in at that point. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. (laughs) Bye-bye. I wish you wouldn't interrupt me while I'm doing my programmes. Anyway, so gone downstairs. The dinner's in the oven. Walked past the washroom. The lights were... Oh, oh, no, I haven't hung it up. And I hate that. Because, you know... Ladies, as you know, those of you that do wash, and there's probably a few blokes out there, which, oh, don't, oh, don't do, oh, the missus does that. Don't you, aren't you? Aren't you awful? She do your own bloody washing. She don't want to do your pants with the skid marks in it, running around in that wash. Put them in yourself, you dirty thing. Honestly. Anyway. Um, so I've pulled this washing out, and we're now quite late. It's now like ten minutes to midday. I thought, well, I've got to hang this up now, just before I come up and start doing the show. Right? I bought it all upstairs. 
dumped it on the ground, and then as I as I'm because I've got like a banister, like a like the top of the stairs is like a, a banister, but there's like three wooden sections, so you can use that to hang washing up. I know you're not supposed to dry washing in the house but I do okay I don't have a mold problem it well the only mold growing is that on my feet and my body sometimes I wake up in the morning there's a big patch of mold on my face do you get that at all I am definitely I'm going off gradually what do you mean I'm past my sell by date how bloody rude are you <laughs> sorry <laughs> Richard said it might even make the local news what this program I hope so Richard Nice to see Richard with us this morning. Good morning, Richard. Uh, and uh, his friend John. They've got an ice cream van, they have. Oh, yes. I'll tell you about that in a minute, if I remember. Um, make sure I, I, I tell him about that, Richard, in a minute, because we keep coming off the story here. And I know people are saying at this very moment, get on with it. I'm trying to get on with it. Believe me, all these interruptions coming in all over the place. Interruptions, dear. Where was I? Oh, yes. So I bought the washing up, dumped it on the floor, and as I've started hanging it over the banister, I thought, oh, what's all this? Uh, obviously, a tissue has gone in... The, you know what I mean, ladies, don't you? A tissue has gone in the washing machine. And it must have been a diff, big, big tissue, because it was everywhere. Bits of tissue all over the whole carpet. And it, they're out there now. Yeah, I haven't had time to hang the washing up and hoover the carpet. The bits of tissue are all over my beautiful red carpet outside. Oh, it's awful. And of course, not only that, because the washing has been in the machine for so long, a lot of it's now creased. I hate that, don't you? Because let me tell you this, I don't do ironing. No, I don't do ironing. Someone actually irons for me, which I'm very pleased about. Although they don't, they don't get much ironing from me. Usually shirts. You see these shirts that I'm wearing? Like today I've got a, a nice, like, light blue. Like, you know, like the sort of, sort of colour shirt that a pilot would wear? Because I have been a pilot before, you know. Oh, yes. Oh, I've done it all, dear. I, ha I, had a, I had a flying lesson once. Thank you, yes. Yes, just one. They were very expensive. It wasn't, wasn't that so much. It's just like when you're in one of those little planes, cool, they'd enough rock about a bit in the wind, dear. I wasn't having any of that. Oh, my stomach was going up and down. <laughs> so I've got a pilot shirt on today. So I usually give them <coughs> uh, my shirts to do, but not the T-shirts. And now, of course, I've hung up a couple of the T-shirts on the banister, on the, on the sort of three-part banister, and they're all creased. So I might have to... I might have to pop round to this this person's house, who will remain nameless, with some t-shirts as well. That'd piss them off, wouldn't it? Eh? <laughs> you ever done that? How many times have you done that, eh? Put your washing in with a tissue as well. It's all over the floor. My nice red carpet. My best mate Ron. He says I need new carpets in the stairs, uh, in the stair and hallway, because like in, in parts there's like a little bit of it coming away. If you see what I mean. You know, coming away from the, um, almost as if it shrunk a little bit. But I'm looking at it, you know, and yeah, there might be a little, sort of a little bit worn in places. But I don't believe in replacing things as soon as, as soon as it looks like it's at it. You know, I think there's years of wear left in some of my stuff here. Years of wear, dear. It really is. Once again, I want to say hello to uh, Richard today. Now, Richard uh, runs, it's not his, he works for someone else. He's got an ice cream van. How fantastic is this? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, just after we finished the uh, show, I got a little Skype message from him, as indeed he sent me one now, uh, telling me that, according to his Skype, I was only something like 600, well, 400 and so metres away from him. So I said, where are you? And he said, South Hill Park in Bracknell. I said, oh, I know, you're at the fun fair. He said, yeah, we're parked right outside it. You can't miss it. He said it's a red ice cream van. So after I finish the show, I said I'll meet you about 2.30. So after the show, uh, I took a little uh, cycle down there. And sure enough, there was this red ice cream van. How wonderful is that? There it was, parked out the side of the fun fair. 
So I said, all right, Rich. And John was there as well. So that was very nice. And I went up and I thought, oh, I wonder if I'll get a free ice cream here. So I went up and I put, you know, I said, I'll have a 99, please. You know, the one with the flake in it. So uh, he gave me that. And I put two a two pound coin in front of him. And I thought, oh, he's bound to say, oh, you can have that. He took the money. He took the money. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to get a free ice cream. Oh, no. He took the two pounds and put it in the till. Well, I shan't bother coming down and visiting you again, my friend. Could have at least given us a free ice cream, couldn't you? Yes. Now, don't forget, you can join in if you want to, boys and girls. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Send us an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, if you've got the Skype, my Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Skype username, Chris Reardon. Phone number, local London number, 020 8133 So, the Waitrose story. Now, Ron, if you've managed to tune in, then now is the time to ring, dear. 020 8133 if, if my little phone thing is working here, is it? Hang on a minute. Oh, I can't hear anything on here. Should I be able to hear something? Dun, dun. One minute. Let me just play a little, little test tone. Oh, yes, I can hear that. All right, yes. I can hear my little test tone. Turn it up there. That's better. All right, I can hear that now. Yes. If you're with us, Ron, give us a ring now. 020 <coughs> I bet he's not there. He doesn't support my activities at all, you know. Anyway, so, in Waitrose, Thursday. Generally Thursday, one comes round early afternoon, we have a bit of dinner, and then we go to Waitrose for our shopping. So we didn't want too much today on this particular day. So we, sh so we got one trolley, one trolley, and we've got our handheld scanners, because we are both registered to do handheld, handheld scanning in Waitrose. Wonderful thing. Now, what is handheld scanning? I can hear you asking. If you're a Sainsbury shopper or Tesco's or Morrison's, you may not be familiar with scanning, with handheld scanning. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Let me tell you this. So, you've got your shopping bags, okay, and you've got your trolley. You put your sh you bring out your trolley, okay, you go and get your trolley, and you open up your shopping bags in the trolley ready. So then... You go and get your scanner, which you must have registered. You have to register a card with it. So I've got my uh, Waitrose um, uh, membership. What is it called? Waitrose membership card. I don't know what it's called. Waitrose membership card, I call it. And uh, you, you, you scan it through the thing, and there's, there's a wall of scanners. And you get a little tone, beep, like that. And a scanner, a scanner on the wall lights up it illuminates boys and girls and your name comes up on it welcome mr seaweed and oh it's what it just makes the whole thing very personalized it really does so this thing is lit up so i've picked it up and that's it and he's picked it up and and that's it and then he wanders off you know i've got the trolley and I, yeah i've got the trolley and he wanders off and he, he does this a lot he just wanders off in the, um, hello ron Ron, and usually I'll have to mobile phone him to find out what part of the shop he's on. He's usually hanging around the bleach aisle. Because cause he's got this OCD cleaning thing. Um, and this is not a joke. He cleans constantly. And his favourite aisle in any supermarket is the bleach aisle. He can go down, oh, oh look at that bottle. That, I think we'll try that one this week. And he loves these chemicals. Loves them. So anyway, off we go. I'm picking up my, my blueberries first. And the blueberries on a scanner, them, beep, beep, beep. And it comes out, it came up on the scanner, please declare this item to the cashier. Okay, so it obviously hasn't scanned. So you put that in the basket, but not in one of the bags. Right? Then uh, you go to another section. I probably bought a, a couple of corn items. Okay, you you do it, beep, and it comes up. Corn steaks, two pound fifty. 
So it's scanned, and then you place that in your shopping bag. Don't put it in a basket, in the bag, which is in the shopping basket. You get, are you following me so far? Right. Any other items? Uh, baked beans, soya milk, uh, other vegetarian products, because you know I'm vegetarian. And you scan it, beep, beep, and it goes in the thing. Right? Then, also in wave drives, because we are members, okay, and not everyone can become a member of Waitrose. I'm sorry, I'm sure it's not the case. I think when you go and apply, you go and apply, in a, and I think they look you up and down a little bit and decide whether or not you're going to be a member. For example, my sister would not be allowed to be a member of Waitrose. Absolutely not, no. I mean, she's more of a co-op person. Not that there's anything wrong with a co-op, right? But that's her. All right, you, I ring her up every night. Oh, she's wonderful on the phone. Hello, sis. All right, bruv, how are you? Is it all all right today? Oh, I've had a lovely time. I've had a lovely time with the kids down the road. Oh, how lovely, sis. Beautiful bit, but, you know. So I don't think they'd allow my sister to be a Waitrose member. She could go shopping there, but she didn't. She just wouldn't have one of the cards, you know. My niece would, Tracy. Oh, absolutely, yeah. My niece would, and, and, and my nephews. They would all have Waitrose, not my sister, she wouldn't have a Waitrose card, right? So you go around, and then, because we are Waitrose members, we are allowed a free cup of tea. And let me tell you, it's lovely, to, it comes out in these little, little cups, um, a cup, and the cup sits, oh, no, hang on a minute, no, the cup is underneath, and on top of the cup sits this little teapot, it's very clever. The cup and the teapot are kind of one. So you take the, 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 the pot off the teacup and you wait and stir it around. If you like it strong like me, you stir it around and leave it a bit. And then you make your tea. All very nice. And of course, and it, this does work in Waitrose's favour. Because, you know, we never go in and just have a cup of tea. We have our free tea, which we flash our... Oh, I don't have to flash my card anymore. Oh, no. No, she recognises me. Thank you. Hello, sir. How are you today? Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I'll have a tea. I've got me... Oh, it's okay, sir. We do know you now. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Ronnie has to get his card out, you know. But then, you know, that's, that's how it is. They, they recognise me. So we always have a cake or a biscuit or, or both sometimes. And, and uh, yesterday, in particular, I had an orange and lemon muffin... And a piece of Millionaire's shortbread, which is like this shortbread with caramel stuff and a bit of chocolate on the top. So we've gone over, and it, there's like, there's like it's, it's quite a, a large area, okay? The, um, <laughs> it, it's quite a large area, the, 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 the tea place, right? They've got, um... A, a, a very comfortable area, which is like one, two, let me think, one, two, three, four. It's like four kind of armchair type things and two sofas. That's where we generally like to sit. So if those seats are available when we start, you know, if we queue, then one of us will quickly go and get this and we'll run over to the seat, usually knocking some poor pensioner over. I'll be a pensioner in 15 years' time, which is quite unbelievable, isn't it, really? I mean, <laughs> I know. Some of you have seen my picture and are thinking, oh, he can't be that age. I know. I'm just one of those things. It's the old genes, you know. Thank you, Mum and Dad, for making me look quite young. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I've got... So we've spotted one of these seats has become available. So Ron said, quick, get the seats, quick. OK, then. What, what, what do you want? I said, oh, a orange and lemon muffin, please. I have a bit of millionaire. Oh, you have them both? I said, yes. So I got that. And he decides... He said, I'm going to have the chocolate cake. And I, I didn't see the chocolate cake. Didn't see what... I think we just meant a bit of chocolate sponge or something like that. So I sat down and he comes over with a tea puts it on the table, and then I spotted this, oh, uh, my, my muffin was there, and, this, and he had this, this like, chocolate and vanilla, like, oh, what was it, like a, oh, what do you call it now? 
Um, uh, cheesecake. It's a cheesecake. And I said, oh, what's that? He said, oh, it's the chocolate cake I told you about. I said, well, that's a cheesecake. I said, you never said they, that had, the, they had that there. And he said, oh, didn't I? Picked it up, smiled casually, and started chomping away on it. Huh. Thank you very much, mate. So we sat there for a while, we read a couple of the newspapers, and then we, off we toddled to continue. We were going to pay for our goods. Now, remember, we've got two scanners. We've got a scanner each. Uh, I said, oh, I'm, I'm just going to buy a magazine over there. He said, OK. So I picked up uh, what, not one of those magazines, no. I don't think so. We don't read those sort of magazines. Not in here. Not in here. Not in, we don't even have them in Berkshire magazines like that. Certainly not in Waitrose. Nasty magazine. Oh, sending shivers up my back, those nasty magazines. Thank you. I carried on and I went over and picked up my copy of Stuff. T3 Stuff. Do you know what that magazine is? No, you don't, do you? It's all the new gadgets and technology. I love it. Yeah, and I think they've got a write-up this week about the iPhone S and all that business. Did you see all those idiots outside the shops a couple of weeks ago waiting for their iPhone S's to come out? <laughs> Queuing up. Queuing up for hours, waiting for the shop to open so they could have it first. How stupid are you? Why would you do that? Isn't it dreadful? I think it's dreadful where people will be queuing up while there's people starving in countries, you know, unable to get enough food to survive and they die. And yet in this country, and, and the States, there's another example, people are queuing up. For hours, so that they can, they can have their iPhone 5S before anyone else. Sad uh -uh's. Sad uh -uh's. You are, sad uh -uh's. <laughs> So I've gone round, got my copy of T3, scanned it, uh, and then I went to, and then I thought, oh, I need some washing up liquid. So I went round, beep, 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 scanned those and put those. Uh, the T3 thing, the scan thing, beep, beep, oh, it didn't scan. Please declare to cashier. I think any items that are kind of over four o'clock, uh, so, so not four o'clock, over four pounds, I think they come up as please declare to, ca to the cashier. So you put those to one side. So we get to the checkout. Right. Ron's in front of me, so it's handed over his scanner, and uh, she's done the thing there. Oh, good morning to uh, James Dean. Good morning, James, who says um, he's got trouble with his Skype. He's using a very old version of Skype, as it's an old Mac. I don't know. What do you do with all your... your James is used to... James is in Manchesterford. Manchesterford. <laughs> And he does a little show on a community radio station there called Thames Tameside FM. Yeah, he's been doing very well there, actually. He's doing the afternoon show now. Are you getting paid for it yet, James? Or is it still all freebies, dear? Oh, what is it with all these management of everything? They don't like to pay for anything, do they? Dreadful. Anyway. So here's... Oh, uh, Richard says, good makeup. It's amazing. I bet I have no makeup on. Look, watch this, right? I'm now going to lick my finger eh, and scrape it on my face. Right. Does it look like any makeup's come up? No, it hasn't. Thank you. There we are. I don't wear makeup. The secret of looking young on videos is to not use high definition. <laughs> it's true. So he's at the checkout now. Given over the scanner, she said, oh, it's asked for a rescan. He said, oh, no, not again. And I'm like, what's wrong? He said, this is the fourth time now. Fourth time they've asked him for a rescan. Now, if I can explain a rescan, right? So although we've gone round with our handheld scanners, beep, 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 and we've gone through the till, occasionally it will tell the cashier, the glamorous cashier, known as Jackie, incidentally, Jackie the cashier, cashier and there's her friend i don't know her name yet um it will tell them to do a rescan so then you hand over all your shopping and they empty the bag they scan it and put it all package it up for you again and then that's it see 
and then you go on your merry way. The idea is that if they, if anyone's nicking, then they are caught. Of course, that would not happen in my case or his case either. So, so he's hit the roof. It's, this is the fourth time. Well, she says there's not a lot I can do about that. He's, he said, "Well, get me the manager." So the managers come over, and I can see them. They've gone over to another tilt. Meantime. Meantime, while the manager's dealing with him, she said, do you want me to do yours now? She says, you'll die if it comes up with a rescan. I said, no, if it comes up with a rescan, it comes up with a rescan, that's it. I handed her my scanner. Bip, okay, that's it, that's fine, sir. Da -da 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 -da. And that's it, no rescan for me. I've never had a rescan. I've had one rescan within about two weeks of me joining the Waitrose Club. That's it. Never had another rescan since. So I handed over my money, that was it. Then I moved forward slightly. And um, and uh, waited for him. So he then is over on this other till with the manager, bitterly complaining that he keeps being singled out for rescans. And the reason seems to be that a few weeks ago, during his some transaction, the machine went wrong. And ever since then, it keeps pulling him out. For another rescan. Anyway, he is not happy. And he said, Well, I'm getting fed up with this. He said, I might as well go for the normal checkout. Right? So, eventually, um, the manager apologizes, da 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 da, and I say, But you will have to have the rescan. So now they start scanning it. Okay? So they scanned it all, da 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 da, and it turns out, so, so it looked, that he had actually overscanned, right? So, as far as from from his point of view, he's saying, for example, I can't remember the exact figures. Doesn't matter the exact figures. He's saying, on his scan, he owes them forty pounds. But then Waitrose turns round to him and says, "No, it's it's thirty six pounds." Or not with 35, whatever it was. Say, say it was 35. It's 35 pounds. And we're like, well, how's that then? So you're saying, you know, we're telling you, like, oh, sorry, he, he, Ron is telling Waitrose, well, I owe you 40 pounds. And Waitrose, on this rescan, which is designed to catch people, that the whole idea is that they catch people who are stealing or abusing the privilege of rescanning because I, I do consider that a privilege the fact that they trust you to actually do this so <laughs> he's telling them that he owes them more than they are telling him waitrose do you see what I mean and so the girls are scratching their heads now not quite sure uh, what's going on and well we better do it again so now they've they've got the receipts here, and item because we in the end you know we'd only gone in for a couple of, you know how it is when you go in the supermarket we'd only gone in for a couple of items, and uh, we've we've ended up with 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 a trolley full of stuff by my my stuff and his stuff as well right, and she's got the receipt now so she's got the receipt, she's got what's come up on the scanner. On the on on the computer and the scanner itself, and we're now trying to cross. <laughs> what a bl you know! In meantime, there's a now a queue building up. We have stopped the queue. There are now three people in the queue, and the lady behind us was looking really pissed off. <laughs> I love it. Meanwhile, I'm just standing there, you know, quite because I, I, you know, I'm I'm quite an easygoing person. I never used to be. I'm quite happy to stand there and sort of wait for things to happen and I'm watching what's going on around me. And all the time I'm thinking, if you'd have just allowed them to rescan when they said, then there wouldn't have been any necessity for all of this. But he would have been out of pocket, as I'm about to reveal to you. So she's cross rushing with the butter, yeah, the butter, yeah. And then she got through to the end of it and she says... Well, I don't know. So she's now looking around and she spots the bags in the trolley, right? She said, 
Hang on a minute. What are those two items of fairy uplift, washing up liquid? I said, well, they're mine. And she said to Ron, have you got that as well? He said, no. It, well, they're on your receipt. Oh, well, how's that happened then? I said, but I must have paid for them. She said, give me your receipt a minute. So I give her my receipt. And the washing up liquid isn't on my receipt. So she has another look at his receipt. And the washing up liquid is on his receipt. But it's my item. And I thought, well, how the devil did that happen? Hang on a minute, let's just work this out. Da -da 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 -da. She said, hmm. Well, that's made it closer, but it's still out by four quid. So we're having another look. She said, whose magazine is that? I said, that's mine. I said, that's the one I declared to you. Do you remember? She said, hang on a minute. So she's had another look. And again, it's on his receipt. Right? So then they type that in and then immediately the differences between their receipts and what he said they owed is now okay. There's no difference. So it's all worked out. And I'm like, well, how's that all happen then? And I'm scratching my head, desperately trying to work out, you know, if I've scanned something and put it in my bag and it's my shopping, which is, and again, on my receipt, the magazine wasn't on my receipt. It was on his receipt. And then a light came on in my head, boys and girls. I mean, I should have been working for the police force. I could find bodies or anything like that that have, you know, not been able to be found or anything like that. I could, I could, I could become a detective. After working out what obviously happened, and it only took me 20 minutes to work this out, while that queue is continuing to build up and the lady is... <laughs> The lady is steaming now behind me. She hasn't said anything yet, but we could just look over and look on that little face of hers. That <laughs> she was getting more and more angry. I'm so sorry, dear. We are moving as quickly as possible. What's happened is that when we had our tea, got up to continue our shopping, I've obviously picked up his scanner without realising it. Or at least that's what I told him. I picked up his <laughs> scanner and he ended up paying for my magazine and my washing up liquid, my fairy washing up liquid, which is incidentally cinnamon flavour. Oh, it's a lovely... Uh, cinnamon and apple flavoured washing up liquid I've got. It smells lovely. How do they do that? Is there actually cinnamon and apples in that washing up liquid, I wonder? How do they do that? And that was it. So I got into the car. As I got in the car, the hand came out. Can I have my money then, please? Because, of course, you know, these two items were like eight quid, so I had to hand over eight quid for the shopping that he accidentally paid for. So that was the Waitrose story. But I, I did kind of think to myself, you know, if it had just asked, if it just accepted the fact that they wanted to rescan, it would have saved all this hassle. And me eight quid as well. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Don't forget the, the email address if you want to join in at any point, boys and girls. My email is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Loads more news and bits and pieces to talk about uh, on the show uh, today. Uh, James Dean is with us this morning on the subject of uh, makeup and things like that. James says, the trick is to keep your face plump. That irons out all the wrinkles. That's why I uh, get asked for ID. Yeah, I mean, it's all very well keeping your face plump, James. But looking at your photo, I see that in order to achieve that, you actually have to keep the rest of your body plump as well. I mean, Christ, you must... Those scowls must complain now when you get on them, do they? Dear, dear me. You know, he gets on the bus in Manchester. John lives in Manchester. Uh, uh, James lives in Manchester. When he gets on the bus, you know, like those 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 buses which are wonderful, and they they lean down for disabled 
people uh, to get on. You know those buses? They lean down. Well, that happens when Jane get, James gets on, and the bloke hasn't even pushed the button. <laughs> Good morning to Marge. <coughs> Good morning, Marge. Who says, uh, I was wrong about the voice at Walmart. It wasn't a UK voice. It's an American's woman voice. Not f not f sure why I thought it was a UK. Yeah, uh, Marge and I were talking the other week about, um, you know, the voice on, on the automatic checkout. Uh, th th and there is an undisclosed item in the checkout area. Please remove this item and, ch ch uh, uh, and try again. Uh, Marge, for some reason, thought it was a, a UK woman's voice, but it's not. I still haven't recorded that, actually, Marge. I must do, I must do that with my repaired recorder. Thank you. I've, uh, do you remember my, 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 um, my very expensive uh, audio recorder broke a little while ago. Uh, the switch on the side broke. And I thought I was going to have to send that away. And you know, it's it's so expensive when you send stuff away now. It's like, be like, you know, 80, 90 quid to have that little switch change. Well, I took it apart. I took it apart <clears throat> and I removed a circuit board on the top and I, and I found that the switch has got two little plastic bits and one of those had broken off so it wasn't moving the switch attached to the switch up and down anymore. It wasn't. So um, uh, I, I ordered one, cost me about 12 quid or something, and replaced it myself and that is now fully working again. I'm really pleased that I managed to do that. Thank you. Anything else you want repaired, send it in. Richard uh, writes, good makeup, it's amazing. What, what makeup? I, haven't, I did keep telling you, I don't wear makeup. Never wear makeup. Thank you. James says when he gets on the bus, they, it said they do say one at a time, please. <laughs> mm. It's a shame they don't say that in, in chariots. Uh, let's have a look. We've got a few messages coming in. <clears throat> good morning to Wendy. Morning, Wendy. Who says she likes the blue shirt I have on today. Thank you, Wendy. I haven't actually bought new shirts for years. These are quite old, all these bits and pieces. They really are. Oh, I wanted to ask, um, when we're doing our warm-up, uh, you know, before we come, come on the show, <clears throat> before we start the show, usually I switch on it about an hour before. And, and I have a test tone playing, which sounds like this. Oh, no, it's, is it that one? No, it's this one. OK. And that stays on for about half an hour. Now, I noticed last couple of weeks, someone has <laughs> has actually been tuning in and staying while that test tone is. Can, can I ask who that is, please? Who's staying in while my test tone? Who's, who's, who's watching while the test tone is on? Do let us know. I'd be fascinated to know that. Email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Marge in Oklahoma, USA. She says, uh, we don't have handheld scanners here. How long have you had that recorder? I saw it in many of your older videos. I've never seen one that big nowadays. Button? Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. <laughs> um, I've had this, or well, must be coming on seven, six years, six years, seven years maybe. I've had this recorder about six or seven years. It's been repaired once in the shop um, <laughs> when it didn't need to be repaired. I sent it away. Oh, it so embarrassing. And it only needs a new battery. <laughs> Cost me nearly 60 quid, that was. 60 quid. Never mind. All right, Marge, thank you. Uh, hello to Craig, <clears throat> who's listening in Hinkley, Leicestershire. Hello, Craig, how are you? Nice to hear from you, sir. Craig here, it was my 29th birthday last Saturday. Oh, right, OK. Well, hang on a minute, we better sing to you then. Why didn't you tell us earlier? One second. Where's my happy birthday? There we are. One minute. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Dear Craig, happy birthday to you. Thank you, Craig. All right, happy birthday for last week, sir. He says, um, I forgot to tell you, I'm an Asda person. Yes, I like Asda. I, I, I do like Asda. That's my second favourite supermarket. So Waitrose at the top, followed by Asda, then Morrison's, then Tesco's, then Sainsbury's. In that order. 
I'm an Asda person. I love my bargains. Last night I got a whoops. Do you know they've been doing that for years? Whoops. That's when you might have a, like a tin that's dented or something like that and it goes in a basket. It's really cheap. I love my bargains. Last night I got a whoops yellow label cooked chicken in a bag. Oh, why are you buying dead animals, dear? Please don't. You must become veg. Everyone must become vegetarians. How can you sit there eating dead animals? No, oh, don't say, yeah, but it's a chicken or it's a bit of steak. No, it's not. It's a dead animal. It's a dead animal you are eating. God knows how long half of this stuff has been dead. I mean, some of it's been dead for years. What, your career? I beg your pardon? Hello, dear. Oh, it's my friend, Ron. Good morning, Ron. Uh, sorry, what was that? Good afternoon, Ron. No, my friend. Yes. Oh, so my best yes. friend, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can they hear me, just so I know? Yes, they can, yes, yes. Oh, wonderful. I won't swear then, dear. Oh, please don't swear. This is a family-based programme. Yeah. <clears throat> sorry? Hello, dear. And what, what exciting... What, what story was you telling? What very... story was you telling? What... Well, I've done it. Oh, no, what one was it? Was it the one where, they, where I was accused of shoplifting? No, you weren't accused of shoplifting. You were asked for a rescan. Yeah, four times now. They think I'm a shoplifter. I know, four Awful. times. <laughs> Awful. All because their system went down. <laughs> Talking I... of waitress, I must go and pick up my new washing bin from John Lewis. I won't tell you how much it costs. £100. Why have you got a washing, washing bin? Why don't you just put your stuff on the shelf like I, I just put it on the side or leave it in the you washing machine? You don't usually leave it on the floor in a pile. I don't. Yes, you do. I don't. Sometimes you do. But you mean the stuff and on the floor in a pile in a bedroom? Yes. That's not dirty washing, that's to be worn. Oh. <laughs> when it's dirty washing... <laughs> <laughs> when, it's di when it's dirty washing, <laughs> it goes down in the washing machine. Yeah, well, I'm, I, I've, I've got to go and pick that up at two o'clock, too. Oh, you poor old son. Oh, Is that from Waitrose? The blonde... So, I went out in Andy's <coughs> Oh, hang on, I didn't, I didn't finish, I didn't finish. There was a little oh, bit okay. more to the story, wasn't there? So, I've got home, put my shopping away, and then went to bed. Got up, right, ready for work. What was this on the... Th it was Thursday, wasn't it? On the Thursday, yeah. got up for Thursday. I thought, well, I'll take my magazine in to work to, to read, you know, while we have a quiet, little quiet period, because I do a bit DJing on Thursday. And the beginning of the night is quite quiet, so I'd talk, take a magazine in to read. I'm looking around, and suddenly was I haven't got the magazine. So then, um, I thought, oh, no, what about the blueberries? Oh, the blueberries weren't there either. So I'd, I'd left them in the kerfuffle that was going on, of course, around you, you know, creating Mary L in there. While that was going on, they'd completely forgotten to put in back in the basket my magazine and my blueberries. But I did ring them up and I said, oh, you've forgotten to do... Oh, yes, well, we've got them to the side, so just come in and uh, you can come and collect new ones. Uh, well, don't take the old ones because they'll be a day out of... They'll be a day older now. Take the new ones. So that, so that was it. That was the blonde oh, lady. That was the, nice bl of them. the blonde wasn't Jackie. You know the little lady with the glasses and the bun in her hair. Yeah, yes. That, her name's Jackie. I found that out. Yes, yesterday. I know. Yes. But I don't know the lady with the blonde hair who she. Uh, while I was buying, ca oh, I, oh, should, oh no, I've admitted it now. While I went and bought a couple of cakes yesterday to have with my tea. Mm. Uh, you know the little, um, the little square ones. What are they called? Like the French, oh, not the, the French fond fancies. Fondant fancies, but they, they... They're not small, dear. The Waitrose ones are huge. Uh, they are quite large, aren't they? Well, I bought two of those, a strawberry one and a yellow one. And all of a sudden, I said, be careful of that one. And I turned around, it was the blonde lady. You oh. know, the blonde lady who usually deals with me. And, you know, and, and, and I never seem to have a rescan. Isn't that funny? You mean, the one, you mean the one that would never serve me when I had a baseball cap on because she thought I was common? <laughs> I was, well, I, tell her. I was telling people, you know, about our Waitrose card. Not everyone can get one. For example, my sister wouldn't have one. No. You know, she, she would. No. My niece, yes. My nephews, yes. yes. Not my sister. Yes. She wouldn't have a Waitrose card. Absolutely not. No. no. Oh, oh, seven million. How wonderful, dear. Oh, not seven million, seven. So, yeah, I went out, I went out in Andy's car last night. Stopped yeah. at a petrol garage for some fuel in. Flat tyre. Flat tyre. Was not very impressed. Oh, a flat tire. no. Was that com not coming home? Yes. So, so you'd I've, been I've, out, hadn't you? You'd been out. So what time is this? Five in the morning? Yeah, about five in the morning. Oh, no. So you did so it yourself, did you? Pouring. 
pouring with rain. Yeah, it was. And it, I had half a flat tyre, so I pumped it up. I got to a garage and pumped it up, and it was fine all the way home, luckily. Yeah. And Andy, w- Andy was going to work. Oh, don't tell and, him. Um, don't tell him. Uh, he drove Just... to work and he's gone down, so he's... You know where he's going? Quick fit. Oh, no. The only place, yep. It's the only real place that he can get a tyre from. Is that so. the only place that's around? Well, tell him. Yeah. Has he gone yet? Or is... Uh, no, no, no. I'm well, tell him, him to, to... they are likely to tell him that he needs something else. Ignore yeah, I'll it. Tell him no. Just yep. ignore it. All it's... he wants yep. is one bloody tire. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, but yep. we can do two cheap. No, one tire. Just That's one all thank he you. Wants. Yep. Or yep. have it repaired. Is it? What's the yep. tread like on it? I don't know. Uh, I think it needs replacing anyway. To Why? With you. Uh, so I'm sure Audi said that, and they. And they uh... So yeah. So that was my night, dear. Oh, you poor thing. In the pouring rain at five o'clock this morning. So what time did you get in? Uh, six. Six? Ten to six in the morning. I oh, know. You I'm got up early, didn't you? Stop out, aren't I? Dear me. Oh, yeah, well. Such a dirty stop out. But there you go. So I've had a lovely little sleep. I've just got up now. The reason why I rang you... Yes. ...was because I had tried the porridge. Oh, and? It's absolutely lovely. I, I told thought... You. I told you. It was going to be quite... I don't think it was going to be sweet, but it's very, very sweet, dear. It's lovely. What one have you got? No need for sugar. I've got the, the syrup one, dear. Well, of course. Yeah, that's the old <laughs> idea, the, the syrup one. I bought some honey one this week. Can I just tell people, um, I've recently changed over to porridge for my breakfast, and I'm, I actually now have porridge first thing in the morning, and usually before I go to work. You don't need to eat anything else. It keeps you full up, and it's delicious. And it's full of energy, dear. Yeah. I've noticed that, mm-hmm. I've noticed that I, I, I have energy at the moment. Not a lot, well, but I have a little bit of energy. It's funny you should say that. I've noticed my eyesight's improved. Now, I don't suppose for one minute, it's, I, I don't know if it would be down to, to, to something that change, change in diet at all, but certainly, because my eyes were getting a little bit blurry, to be honest, but that stopped. Maybe That's, it's the sugar... Well, yeah. Maybe it's the sugar. Beer. I think one of the th- one of the things with diabetes is um, is blurred vision, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that's all to do with weight as well, though, dear. But you're trying to sort that out. Well, I've lost a little bit, haven't I? Oh yes, yeah, so I'm yeah, I've, tell- I've lost that's- half a stone. Yeah. Blurred vision diabetes. Let's have a look. Diabetes related eye conditions. <clears throat> one moment, please. In your eye. The most serious eye conditions involve the network of blood. This can result in blurring of vision, which comes and goes over the day. So you, that you, I mean, you know that that one does thing doesn't worry me because of the bit around my waist. But yeah. good, lots of exercise, and um, I saw another thing about porridge, and it says it actually scrubs the inside of your veins. I don't know how true that oh. is. It's supposed to be really, really good. I haven't found anything bad said about porridge. Mm. Mm. Does... I'm actually looking at you on my screen while you talk. It's quite strange. Oh, yes, but my vo- my mouth won't be moving at the same time, will it? No, it's very funny, dear. Yes. I'm, I, I could really laugh. Really? Well, have a good laugh, then. I do have a good laugh. Have it's you got like, anything else to say? To... Because I, 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 I really need to go downstairs and, and just stir my dinner. I could leave oh. you on for a second. Oh, what would you like me to talk about? Um, Something interesting, like the European Union? <laughs> no. Oh, you know no, how I feel about those Europeans, It can't dear. be much longer that we're going to be stuck in that. Our, well, friend, we, we, our best I, friend, I, Mr. I saw the other day, I saw something on the news the other day. But carry on, pushing carry Cameron on, carry for on, a 2014 on. vote, dear. They're pushing Cameron for a 2014 vote. The backbenchers... The rebels, dear. The rebels in the Conservative Party. Hello? Have I lost you? I've lost you, dear. I've lost you.
Are you still there? Oh, is he gone? Oh. Must have hung up. Hello? Oh, there you are. Did you get cut off, dear? I did, yes. And then my computer went off and I've just realised that you wasn't there. Well, no, you I did. Away and left you were supposed to talk here. while I... <laughs> I went, you I went didn't down to tell me that, dear. I went down uh, to stir the dinner. I did tell you that. You have to do that. Once, <laughs> once you started in full flow, I didn't actually think you'd notice I'd gone. That's <laughs> an awful thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite funny, though, dear. <laughs> have you stirred your dinner? Eh? Have you stirred it? I have stirred the dinner. I've got the um, the uh, baked that, potato today and the vegetables. Yes, you're quite good at that, aren't you? Yes. Stirring. St I would not dare stir. I would no. not dare stir. No, I know. I'm only anyway, that, did you get yeah. to the end of what you wanted to say? No, I was saying about I saw on the news the other day about how the Tory backbenchers are pushing Cameron for a 2014 vote on the on the on oh, the, yeah, on the I referendum. Saw that. Dear. What's the chances of that though? Very slim, I suppose. Well, it's it's becoming more and more because you know they they they, they don't want it, dear. No, they don't want it. Oh, I don't and want I'm it. And I'm telling you, this thing with Nick Farage. He's, he's really, he's really blowing the wind up these people. Nigel, Nigel, people. dear, Nigel. Blowing the wind up these people. Nigel we Farage. Like Mr. Farage, yeah. Nigel, you said Nick. Oh, did I? No, Nick, it's oh, Nick, it's Nick, it's Nick, um, Nick. Oh, oh not Clegg. Nick Clegg, uh, it's, it's not Nick oh. Wait, it's now, oh, poor awful, Nick. Oh, he's awful, dear. Poor Nick. Nick. Clegg. It's all collapsing for him, isn't it? Poor Nick. Good. <laughs> he's awful, dear. He's absolutely I mean, awful. sometimes I think the Liberal Democrats, why... Do they they bother? bother. <laughs> What's all What's that the point? about? Eh? <laughs> what is the point in them, dear? I don't understand. Well, I don't know. I think I think it. To be honest, with the coalition, right? I think it stops any any policies that might be really far too right wing. Doesn't stop them all, but something. Yeah. And I do think it keeps the Tories in check. As you know, Attached. I've been a, I've been a Tory practically all my life. In the last few months, I have become UKIP. Yeah, I have become yes. UKIP. Yes, we, and you, as you have, haven't you, darling? Yeah, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I just, I, you know, this whole thing with Europe and us sending troops all over the world with, with things that have got absolutely nothing to do, with, and no one ever says <clears> these <throat> things. No one ever says, "Hang on a minute, what has this got to do with us?" Yeah, exactly. you know, all that rubbish that, that they come out with. Oh, you know, we want to be. You know, we want to stand up in times of trouble and say that we helped others. But what about helping out our own first? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, there's, yeah. there's all these things, you know, nurses that are not getting paid, and doctors that are not getting paid, and managers that are getting paid, and all that. Well, I... You know, I and it just seems... I'm, that it's, it's infuriating. And, the, and, and Mr. Farage... He seems to come out and say these uh, things. Nigel, we like Nigel. We do you know, like and, Nigel. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm just—it just infuriates me the way that you know, they, they're overlooking the people in, mm. in, in this country. It's, it's just a shame that there's a lot of infighting. It seems to be infighting within that party, and I think that 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 will unfortunately do. What within do within, within the within UKIP? Yes, yes. There's a bit of infighting. I don't think it's infighting. Them. I it's think what shame. it is, they need I to, think there they are, need to there come are, out. There are a few members. There are a few <clears> members that are, let's say, uh, a tad eccentric. Oh yeah. Who was that bloke who's just been suspended? George, someone or other, wasn't it? Yeah, but he was. He's right. hilarious. He was right in, hilarious. Oh, what saying, dear? It was only a joke. It was only yep. a joke, and the papers have picked it up and thrown it out of all proportion. The best one. Mm -hmm. The best one. And I was in entire agreement with him. So this, this, this Channel 4 news, I mean, Channel 4 news, have you ever watched that? Oh, oh yes. God. What a joke that is. Anyway, so this Channel 4 news bloke, he had the, the UKIP pamphlet, and he's already having a go at this bloke for something he said at the, um, at the conference, right? Picked up this pamphlet, he says, can I just show you this front picture? And the bloke says, and G George, it was someone George or George someone. I can't remember what his yep. name is now. Yep, yep, yep. And he said, yes, what, what's wrong with it? He said, well, have a look at all the faces. Not one black face. And the bloke says to him, he said, how dare you? You are a racist. And the bloke says, what do you mean I'm a racist? He said, how dare you mention the colour of people's skin is while they're on that front cover? It, or, or words to that effect. And he said, yeah. He said, 
Well, I'm not being racist. Yes, you are. How dare you? Whacked him on the head with the magazine and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it was quite right because what he was trying to do was saying that this George bloke was a racist because there were no black faces there. And quite rightly, George then come back to him and says, you know, don't, don't choose don't, people's yeah. why they're on the front for the colour of skin. Well, so, so we just put a few black people on there, you know, for, um, uh, what's, for, what's, for publicity purposes. For publicity purposes, no. That just happens to be who's in the party at the moment. If black people yeah. do, then they will be in there as well. So he yeah. was absolutely right there. That was not a racist issue. And yes, I think that was a racist remark from that Channel 4. And people pull this out far yeah. too often. Far of too often. They do. It's the same as the gay card and the homophobic card. Oh, the, the whole card. gay thing. Oh. And the whole gay thing. And then people do do gay jokes and like really lefty gays are, are well I'm offended uh, oh I'm offended by that I'm, I'm offended. not offended by anything yeah. do you know what there's quite often I might be working in uh, one of the straight many straight bars I do there's nothing better than having your ass slapped by a straight lad and saying are you alright you old puff ah yes <laughs> I love it it's, yeah I, I love, love it, it too, but someone they don't else say old puff oh no me. they say young hottie oh no you're off they say what to you they say they say you're hottie you're, 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 I'm, I'm not gay or anything, but you're really good looking for a man. That's what I get. <laughs> you do live on another planet. You really do, no, don't I'm you? telling you, dear, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank well, you. If, if you're sure, dear, if you're sure. Oh, yeah. Wendy's disappeared. She's gone to do her shopping now. Bye-bye, Wendy. Oh. Say goodbye to Bye, Wendy. Wendy. All right. Right, I'm going right, to finish off this email I'll then. I'll you to it. Are you going to pop over? I will pop over, yes, after I've had my dinner. What time? It will probably be about be two, late. I think. I think it'll be about two. I need to have a little two, sleep. Two, Sorry, dear? Two, 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 I'll come up in the car so it's quick. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, caller. There we are. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we are, my little friend Ron calling in there. Bye-bye. <laughs> He's gone. Thank God for that. Oh, anyway, now where were we? Oh, yes, I was in on, on to the... Um, on to the uh, email from Craig, who says, uh, Craig here, it's turning around, so happy birthday, Craig. Uh, he's an Asda person. Uh, he got some uh, bargains while he was there. He got a Whoops yellow labelled cooked chicken. So whoop stuff is like stuff that's maybe a dented tin or something like that. Uh, for two pounds. Two pounds for chicken. Normal price is six pounds. I mean, I I'm sorry, Craig, but you, what sort of life has that chicken had for six quid? You know, I, I just wish people would look on YouTube videos about battery chickens or stuff like that and, and actually learnt what goes on to produce a chicken for six pounds. It really bothers me. Bothers me so much, you know, I, I, I find it difficult now walking past the meat counter, or as I like to call it, the dead animal counter in a supermarket. Happened actually on, on Thursday when we were both in Waitrose, so I'm walking past this thing. Ron stopped to buy some chicken ham or turkey ham, I can't remember what he was getting. So I'm standing there and I started looking at all these dead animals, and that's how they looked to me. And I thought, God. What life have you lived? I'm looking at all this stuff in there. And this is what goes from my head. Even, even free range things, they've still got to be shot in the head. You are eating something that's been shot in the head or had its throat slit or been bored alive, depending on what it is. And he looked up and he saw me, he said, go on, go. I said, well, I'm waiting for you. He said, no, I, I can see this is upsetting you. Just walk off. So I walked off and... <clears throat> Dare I tell you, I went, went round to the tea section and I, that's all I could think about. And I, I, my, there were actually tears appearing in my eyes. I don't know why it's, I've started to feel so strongly about this. But anyway, do, do, do so have a look at that. You know, what sort of life has that had for £6, pound, that chicken? He said he got a tin of cheese, 
Heinz baked beans for 20 pence, full price 90 pence. Pizzas, 20 pence each for pizza. That's not bad. pound fifty is the full price, three in total. So you've got three pizzas for 60 pence. That's not bad. I gained a friend who shops with me every night in our Asda store. He's older than me, but doesn't like paying much on shopping. He's learnt me a thing or two. He lives with his sister and they try and make their money count. Good. Good. Always be trying to save money. That's very good. Doctor Who news. Missing episodes have been found on the second Doctor, which was uh, Mr Troughton, Patrick Troughton. Nine episodes in total, ready to download on iTunes, and more are on the way. I expect the BBC will be showing those um, uh, 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 old Doctor Whos at some point, won't they? Of course, we've got the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who coming up soon, which we're all looking forward to. Uh, another good programme that I've got into on the telly is on Saturday nights on BBC One Atlantis. This was the re re replacement for Merlin which is um, finished now. Really good programme, OK? Give that a one and a go. Atlantis uh, on BBC One tonight, I think around about 7, 8 o'clock, which is quite nice. Is that after Strictly Come Dancing? Oh, we had uh, one of the Strictly Come Dancing people in the pub last night. I work at the Black Cap in Camden uh, every Friday night. Uh, regular listeners to the show will know that I was there for 18 years. Uh, I started there in 1989. I left in 2007. And I've recently gone back there on Friday nights, only three weeks ago. And uh, Craig was in there last night from uh, from Strictly Come Dancing. I've actually seen him in there a few times. Uh, last time I saw him in there, was I was doing bingo in there, quite oh, about eight years ago now. And he won the bingo. And he came up on stage and cho chose a little prize. It's only a CD, little prizes and things like that. So it was nice to have Craig from, you know, he's one of the judges from Strictly Come Dancing. Really nice man as well. He's quite a nice bloke. Don't don't think that he's the same person as he is on the um, on the TV show. You know, a lot of that is for the TV show. Most of these people away from that are quite nice people. And he come come across as quite a nice person. He had this like flowery. I think he had a T-shirt on as well. His his hair looked completely different because they do all your hair and that for telly, didn't they? I mean, if I was ever on proper telly, they wouldn't have to do much to my hair, would they? Because I've got a number. I did have a point two, a, a point two, point two cut there. Hang on, is, is that go, is that baldness showing through again? Oh dear, I think it's going to have to be cut again. <laughs> um, Thag Ashleel says, "For God's sake, don't scare me with the blurred vision on top of everything else." No, I, 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 I it was at the time where I was eating quite a lot of chocolate and Maltesers and things like that. So I, I think it was probably all the sugar. It's stopped. That has stopped now, so I'm pleased about that. Thag Ashleel says, Not sure about Atlantis. Yet the best character for me, though, is Hercules. Oh, so she, you're not got quite into it yet. I'm not... <clears throat> I'm not as into it as I was Merlin, but then again, we've only had two episodes, with episode three coming up tonight. So, you know... I, th I think I will. G I think I'm getting into it. I'm not watching whole episodes. I'm watching like a bit of. Oh, I'll watch the rest of that later. If I was really into it, then I'd watch the whole episode. Do you know what I mean? So yes, I hope that uh, uh, will become as good as uh, as Merlin was. Um, Marge in Oklahoma. <clears throat> she says. Um, I set my clock for 6am on the computer this morning, but forgot to put a sound effect to it, so I'm late watching. I missed the first 30 minutes. It doesn't matter, Marge, because you always catch up on the recording anyway, don't you, my darling? Eh? Yes, you do, so it doesn't matter. If you ever miss any of the show, then, um, as I say, the audio version of the show goes up usually within about 15 minutes of me finishing, OK, the live and you can find that at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. The recorded video version takes a lot longer to go up. Uh, what happens is that I finish, then it has to go on a computer and be resaved. That takes hours and usually isn't up till about 10, 11 o'clock on a Saturday night, which is tonight, of course. So that goes up later. And there are two ways of finding that. Either go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and it appears underneath the summary. OK just above the audio version, or you can subscribe on YouTube. My YouTube new username is Chris Reardon UK. YouTube user username Chris Reardon UK. 
Uh, Marge also has been a bit of a vegetarian recently, but... Bad news, boys and girls. She says, I gave in and bought some chicken thighs to eat, and after cooking them, I could not eat them. I felt I was stroking the leg of my pet chicken and gave the chicken to my dog. So I'm broke totally from meat now. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I could understand that. Hmm. Maybe everyone should keep chickens and that would stop them eating them. Huh? <laughs> oh, well. I, I'm, you know, I'm glad to hear that, Marge, really. An another, another person who's not eating dead animals. Um, Marge says, I was going to Walmart earlier this week, which is one thing I'm looking forward to doing when I go to Florida. Because I'm taking my nephew uh, to Florida in January. I still haven't booked it yet. I'm waiting for this money to come through from a flat I've recently sold. Once that comes. Although I did get good news yesterday the, that the contracts have now been exchanged. And it completes on the 28th of this month. The, the sale of uh, a flat that I have. Because I need to pay some uh, bills. So I had to get rid of that. And uh, also the, the lease is, is down to 71 years. So you want to get rid of it when it gets sort of that low. And um, excuse me. I've got itchy ear today bit of an itchy ear that's better looking forward to taking my um uh nephew to florida i'm going to see barry manilow while i'm there and also take him to uh, disney and universal maybe nasa as well but that's quite a distance uh decided not to hire a car because i get lost so easily and it's just oh god no you don't want to be with me when i'm lost it's it's quite it's, i'm awful I just start panicking. So I decided to get cabs everywhere. I worked out, I've already had a look at how much cabs are in Florida. And it's not prohibitively expensive. Probably actually works out to about the same as it would to hire the car along with the bloody insurance for, 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 for 10 days. Although we won't have to get a car every day because the hotel runs a free shuttle to Disney anyway. So that's the way it is. Uh, the NASA, well, <laughs> if we wanted to get a cab to NASA, that would work out at about $800 return. But you can get a bus. Apparently, there's a bus for twenty-five dollars each. So that's how we're going to do that. I'm so looking forward to be able to giving a boy a holiday like that. I'm really looking forward to that, and give, making sure he has a good time. And he, the only thing is, he likes the shopping. I quite like. I'd like to do a bit of shopping now and again. You know, I'm not mad on shopping. I do a bit of shopping now and again. And um, he likes all the designer stuff. And, of course, in the States, that's much cheaper. So we need to find some designer outlets uh, near Orlando. And, of course, a Walmart. We have to go to Walmart. <laughs> that might seem really strange to the Americans that listen or watch the show. Because you do it all the time. But you have to understand, uh, uh, a Walmart, we don't have a Walmart here, so I just want to go in. I love going in different shops, even supermarkets in other countries and seeing what they've got. Oh, I love it. Love it. Um, so Marge says, I was going to go to Walmart earlier this week. I was coming up to an intersection. I couldn't make myself go on to Walmart. I felt go home. And so I decided to listen to my spirit guide and went on home. But before getting home, my chain broke on my motorcycle. I'm so happy because it was easier for my mother to come and get me on my bike to take me home. I replaced the chain myself and it's great now. $60 for the chain. Oh, well done. Well done because Marge can do all that. Bike fixing and everything. You got on well with my nephew, uh, Marge, because he's doing um, car body work. That's his job. He does car body work. It worries me a bit with his lungs and all that, but they have masks and all that. I'm not quite sure how good these masks and things are, you know. All right. Okie doke, how are we doing? One fifteen. Let's have a look. Do we have another story there? I, oh, yes. Yes. Now, this is bad news. You remember I have told you, you know, how good the weather has been. Now, it's gone colder, but it's still not freezing cold yet. It's still OK. I still haven't got the heating on. Well, don't need it. I don't feel cold. Look, I've only got a, a shirt on in here. I don't feel the cold. I'm very lucky like that. Unlike my mate, you know. Yeah. When I say to you, I put the heating on probably December. Maybe a little bit in November, right? On the other, on the other extreme, he probably turns his heating off for a couple of weeks in June, July. That's it. 
you know, when I go round there this afternoon, I know I'll be taking off all the layers because it'll be so hot round his house. He has that heater on all the time. It's too much. Anyway, this is bad news. According to the Daily Express, who are not known <laughs> for giving good weather forecasts, but nevertheless, on the front page this morning, forecasters, and this is in the Daily Express, Forecasters last night warned the entire country is set for a horror freeze which will bring brutal winds and fierce blizzards. This ain't good. Temperatures have already started to plunge as a swathe of cold air from the Arctic has swept across the UK in the past few days. Well, it's not actually the temperature that's plunged, it's the wind. The wind is really cold. Really cold. I was uh, going down to the swimming pool yesterday and I had a hat on, you know, to cover my poor little delicate ears. The first long-range forecasts warn of record-breaking snowfall next month. Now, we generally, certainly down here in the south, southeast, we don't have snow in November. We did, I remember, about three years ago. It was terrible. They reckon it's coming back. Heavy wintry showers are expected to cause widespread chaos with below average temperatures possibly lingering until February. November, December, January, February. Four months, dear. Four months. Persistent cold snaps with some very heavy snowfall are likely and I would not be surprised if some records are not broken this year. They reckon uh, the position of a fast-flying band of air known as the Jet Stream, the Jet Stream, near to Britain and high temp pressure for the extreme conditions. Oh, no. No. <sighs> James Madden, forecaster for exact weather, said it was likely to be the worst winter for more than 100 years. A horror winter scenario is likely to bring another big freeze with copious snow for many parts. There's also a high risk we will experience a scenario similar to December 2010, that was it, uh, uh, especially in January, which is likely to produce major disruption to public transport and school closures. This is terrible. Terrible! It really is. I wonder what the BBC weather says. Hang on, BBC weather Bracknell. <laughs> Let's see what it says. So that, that was the Daily Express. Now, I trust the BBC with my weather. I really do. Let's have a look. So, tomorrow 11, Monday 11, Tuesday 13, Wednesday 14, Thursday 17, Friday 18, Saturday 18, Sunday 18, Monday 18. No sign of that cold weather yet. Fingers crossed they've got it wrong. Eh? <laughs> Finally on the show today, we have another, another wonderful audio message sent in from John. Hello, John. And here is the audio message that he sent in, boys and girls. Hi, Chris. I guess that you are a supporter of charities that might be a bit of a charity shop haunter like me. The weirdest thing I ever bought was a Zulu spear from Oxfam. How much is the spear, says I, admiring the tuft of ostrich feathers sprouting out of the leather blade protector. Six quid, says the volunteer, and over the spondulix, and he hands me the spear. Um, aren't you going to wrap it up then, says I, you know, I don't think walking through the streets of Headingley with a lethal weapon will please the general populace. In any case, it didn't make all that much difference. It was wrapped so badly that it was fairly obvious that I was trying to smuggle an African Asagai spear back home. People were literally moving out of my way as fast as they possibly could. Anyway, I do one day a week at a local hospital for, for terminally ill people. It's called palliative care. Um, it's a funny expression that it softens the whole idea that these people are in the last stages of their life, often in pain, and all with the understanding that there is no cure for their ailment. It's a gentle environment that I hope never to have to experience myself, though it tempers hopelessness with kindness. 
on Fridays we have a sale and make a lot of money which all goes back into maintaining the hospital but what I don't understand is that when I am behind the bric-a-brac store or selling stuff in the furniture warehouse I'm sometimes I get people asking about the price of something whether it is an egg whisk or a battery powered carrot grater and the price ticket is stuck on the object what follows almost without fail is that's a bit dear I will give you a couple of quid no you won't you, you, you wouldn't go into HMV and pick up a Miley Cyrus DVD for 20 quid and say I don't like all this twerking business so I will give you a tenner the money we make goes to dying people we are one of those charities that don't pay chief executives five figure sums but I was really surprised there was a massive bust of some uh, Roman Emperor and uh, went to my boss and she said oh it's Hadrian I said are you stupid it's obviously Antoninus Pius one of the greatest Roman emperors of all time a kind general was father to Commodus who was the evil type in um, uh, the gladiator film Uh, you could get quite a lot of money for this and uh, she said how the hell do you know so much about Roman emperors I just said well I just do you know how it is I haven't got my microphone on there we are Um, thank you for that John I finished rather quickly there isn't that awful people going into charity shops and not not wanting to pay what's on there But I thoroughly agree with what you say. I think people who run charities who are on five-figure sums or even four-figure, I think that's disgusting. I really do. Their argument is, well, we need someone at the top who knows what they're doing. Oh, no, it's, it's just wrong. You know, if, you, if you're given to charity, can I suggest that you do go online and have a look? Usually you can find out how much the person at the top is getting and perhaps adjust your contribution accordingly. All right. I think that's a wonderful thing that you, you John, you've never, you've never spoken to. You've kept very quiet about that, actually volunteering for um, hospitals for the, the terminally uh, ill people. And I think that's a wonderful thing to do, volunteer to do anything to do with hospitals. Uh, I have a friend, uh, a very elderly lady who's well into her 80s, and she works at a hospital in Hammersmith uh, along the volunteer section i think they sell things i'm not quite sure exactly what they do uh what what exactly they're raising money for but they sell all sorts of things you know maybe homemade jams and things like that although there was an item one item that not allowed to it might be the jam actually um i'm not allowed to sell it anymore because of health and safety health and safety you know so i think that's wonderful what you do there john uh, i certainly if i had time which i don't if i had time perhaps you know if 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 at some point i retire i don't know although well i don't i don't feel i want to ever retire doing the things i do uh, my friend on lbc steve allen he says because you know with dj and karaoke quiz nights it's a kind of form of showbiz and he said you don't ever really really retire from showbiz showbiz retires you so that may happen one day and you just have to accept it if that happened i'd probably do more little shows like this and i I think i would do voluntary work in hospitals or or places like that that's that's great that you do that thank you john for that uh wonderful audio message another one next week please and finally, uh, oh, Marge says, uh, what's your favourite season on holiday? Mine is Halloween. <sighs> I don't know. My favourite holiday would have been Christmas when I was a child. I don't, not because of presents, it, it was just magical. Christmas isn't so magical anymore. Um, for me, I don't know really. I don't. I think it would still have to be Christmas, my favourite holiday, though. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Finally, today, uh, an email from James, who says, "Hi, Chris. You mentioned the NHS 
Hasn't it been common knowledge that these managers are being paid a lot of money and I would like to know exactly what they do for this money? And yes, the frontline services always seem to suffer. Oh yes, there's the some of them on £300,000. Managers of the NHS, I don't want to go into that today because we did all that on the show last week. By the way, if you ever um, want to go back on any shows uh, that you might have missed, that's very easy. Just go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and you can either download the audio or watch the video version uh, from that site. Okay? And incidentally, I meant to tell you at the beginning of the show, we are not seven years old, we are eight years old. Yes, boys and girls, I've been ta talking utter rubbish now, for eight years doing the show. And it got me to kind of thinking, because I was listening to the radio the other night, and some girl was on there, and she was talking to her, how long have you been doing? She was a regular radio presenter, uh, which I'm not. And they said to her, how long have you been doing the podcast? Oh, seven years now. And they, and they said to her, oh, you must have been one of the longest people to do. So she's taking all the thanks and all that, and all the, you know. All the, and I thought, hang on a minute, I've been doing longer than that. So I must look that up, who's, who's been doing podcasting the longest. I can tell you the first, the first date, just a minute, let's have a look. Uh, there it is. <clears throat> the first one, I, I was doing it before this, but the first one I've got uploaded... Oh, is that going to work? There we are. October, right, here we are. The first one I have uploaded was... Oh my God, I do look young in that picture. I've got hair. I've got hair in this picture. Go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, right? On the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, you'll see all the dates. Go down to 2005. Click on October. And at the bottom, you'll see United Kingdom Talk, 1st of October, 2005. So we are now... Just over eight years old. I've been talking utter rubbish for eight years. James in Manchester, oh, I'm surprised he's still with us now. I thought you would, you would have fallen asleep a long time ago, James, to be honest. He says, you've been talking utter rubbish for many more years than eight. <laughs> have a look on that. Go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. On the right-hand side, uh, scroll down to 2005 October. Click on there. Scroll that down to the bottom, you'll see United Kingdom Talk, 1st of October 2005, and a picture of me looking ever so young with hair. I had hair! <laughs> Eight years! Unbelievable. Um, come on, Marge, hurry up and write that. I'm, I'll read that out before I go. <laughs> Have you ever thought about how sound waves go out into the universe? Some alien on some planet is probably listening to you, or perhaps an entire planet has evolved around your shows. <laughs> Do you think so, Marge? I doubt that very much, my darling. <laughs> anyway, time to go. As always, uh, thanks for watching and listening today. My email address, please feel free to send an email in. We're not getting many emails at the moment. It's, uh, do you know, I look so much forward to every Saturday. I wish I could do um, more shows in this, but time doesn't allow it. I really look forward to our Saturday afternoons together. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening, uh, and join us again next Saturday afternoon at 12 midday. Bye-bye now.